You must be Herb. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Oh. My name's Matt. Misty. Nice to meet you, too. I'm really impressed to walk up and find you splitting wood. Well, we've got to have it. Got to keep the kids warm. The beautiful thing about firewood, you can get warm by it three times. Cutting it, you get warm. You carry it in the house, you get warm a second time. And then you kick back and put it in the wood stove and enjoy your evening. Where's the rest of the fam? They're all inside. Really? Yeah. Hey, guys. This is my daughter, Stephanie. Hey. Florence. Hey, Marty. Marty. <laughs> There's four healthy family members, but the dad's out cutting firewood alone? That's unconscionable in my family. Six months ago, former scrap dealer Herb Russell sold his four-bedroom house in the suburbs of Baltimore. And with his wife Florence, <laughs> son Herb Jr., and daughter Stephanie, sunk the $50,000 proceeds into a cabin and eight acres in these hills. My wife and I have always had this dream about living off-grid. Just me and her and the kids. The kids spend their time watching TV while their mom, Flo, and Herb Sr. do the homestead chores. It's been tough coming out here, but I was always taught a man should take care of his family. Jonas is kicking our butt right now. And there's only three foot of snow outside. Storm Jonas is one of the worst storms of the last 100 years. Pinned down by the storm and with only enough savings in the bank to survive another month, the family is in dire need. I've probably got just enough firewood to last those three days. If it goes any longer, I really don't know what much more I could do. My dad getting up every hour of the night trying to keep us warm. I don't know how much more I could take. I'm exhausted. We're not equipped to deal with this situation. It's not like we can say, hey, we'll go back in the city. There is no other alternative for us. We honestly need some help. On the edge of survival, the Russells reached out to the Rainies for help. To maximize what little money the Russells have, the Rainies will source materials from the homestead and make improvements that pay for themselves. When you come to a homestead, first thing you do, inspect it. Hey, Herb, what's your wood supply right now? Uh, that's it. I'm looking <laughs> at it. Really? Yeah. How much wood do you go through? Oh, uh, a lot. Something's wrong. One man cutting wood for two hours a day should be more than enough to heat a typical cabin of this size. But Herb is spending twice that time and still can't keep his family warm. Something's just not right about all that ice. As far as the eye can see, in all directions, there's snow. There's one place I see no snow. Where is that? There's no snow on my roof. All that heat is going right out that roof. That's a fact. Do you have insulation? No, there's no insulation on the roof. I only have a, a thin layer of plastic to keep the heat down. You think that's sanitary? No. The dog might not even drink this. Their situation, frankly, is dire. This is basically a shelter. This is not a home. This reminds me of an Alaskan word, chichaco, newbie. It's a person that comes to that wild country up there and is unprepared. I see chichaco written all over this. Meanwhile, Misty is with mom, Flo, checking out how the homesteaders are feeding themselves. All right, so this is your freezer. It is. What do we have in here? I see store-bought. This is what you have on your homestead as far as food right now. It is. At the moment, the Russell family are reliant on dwindling savings to buy store-bought food. By this time of year, in Alaska, our family has enough food preserved for the year. Oh. We just, it's, it's new to us, so. Let's have a look at the pig. Her name's Lola. 
You named her? We did. Step one, don't name any animal that you potentially have to slaughter. As far as protein source, is this an option? No, I don't see that as an option. I see that being hard for us. Okay, so this is more of a pet. Right, right. Okay, so um, do you have um, livestock here? We do. Besides a pig that they won't eat, the only other food source on the homestead is the 12 chickens Flo bought for $250. So what do you think you're getting a week in eggs? I would probably say about 18. A person needs to eat around 12 ounces of protein a week to survive. The Russell's only food source is providing one twelfth of what they need. It's their only source of protein in the homestead. It's real simple, food, water, shelter. And food is just, it's lacking. The Buchanan State Forest is one of Pennsylvania's richest hunting grounds. So you guys have seen deer around this part? Yes, yeah, yeah. all up on here. Hunter Matt wants to know if the Russell kids, Herb Jr. and Stephanie, can restock their pitiful food storage with game. It looks like we found the game trail super highway. Oh, yeah. Oh. A significant amount of deer have traveled through here. A lot of the best trails that you'll find in the wilderness are trails that are made from game. One large game animal harvested and preserved in the fall would have sustained the four Russells throughout the winter. You got a 22. When's the last time you shot that thing? Probably a year ago. Was it on a hunting trip? Um, no, it was just target practice. Oh, all right. That's good to know. They live in fertile game country, and this family is taking none of it. Herb Jr. is in his prime. He has a great opportunity to harvest all the meat they could possibly eat for an entire winter. But game is not the only wildlife roaming these forests. This is telltale signs of a bobcat. That's a dangerous predator. Stephanie, you ever shot a gun? No, I've never shot a gun. So if I saw something like that, I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, that is very serious. It'd be a really good idea to know how to shoot. You're worried? Yeah, I'm definitely worried, yeah. Yeah. These are major red flags to me. They have no idea how to protect themselves, and they have no idea how to hunt. Marty, Misty, and Matt set up their base camp and take stock of the challenges they face. This place is crazy. When you start taking a look around, there's no signs of them living off the land at all. Have you seen the wood pile? The only person I saw chopping wood on this homestead was the dad, Herb Sr. And you never let that fly in our childhood. We are out there with you, and there's three of us banging it out. It's a fact of life these days. Not everybody's a hard worker, but it's the only life I've ever known. I instilled that hard work ethic into my kids. I would consider myself a failure as a father had I not passed on that work ethic. We have to fix this situation to get that family united, doing these chores together. Matt, this family needs a hunter. You think Herb Jr. would be up for a hunt? Only in that moment, when you're on that hunt, will you be able to tell somebody can, you know, pull that trigger. This homestead is in disarray. The chances of surviving a winter off-grid, 10% or less. In fact, it might be easier if I just go down to the hardware store in town to buy a for sale sign and drive it in the corner of the property. I gotta teach Herb Jr. to be able to hunt and shoot a deer. And I don't know if he's got the heart or the drive. All right, I'm gonna show you the most effective kill zone area. It's right here, just behind the shoulder blade. Not only will you hit one vital organ, 
but you'll hit two, possibly three. Zero suffering, it will literally die on impact. All right, man. I think you should lead the way. Let's go. Most of the ground frozen, this is one of the few places deer will have the opportunity to drink. Let's see what we can see around the corner. Right. I can see something. It's definitely a doe. Start your breathing and try to find that center of calmness and take that shot. Come on, Herb. Hand me that rifle. You did it, man. Yeah. This deer did not suffer. Get it right in that zone, just right behind the shoulder. This stuff really affects me, you know, emotionally. I don't want to kill anything, you know, but that's part of our life. Yeah. You'll never take a steak for granted again. Herb Jr. has passed the first test. I couldn't be more proud of little Herb. He went through a rite of passage. You know, I went through it with my family, and now he's gone through it. And I think that's pretty amazing. 